Redmond Point Reyes National Seashore with ecologist and author Laura Cunningham. And I'm trying to understand what I'm seeing, and with her help, I'll get a better idea of that today. And behind us, there is a variety of plants. There's a myriad of different greens, but I see a distinctive line of a bright green, which is pretty in, in a golf course sort of way. <laughs> yeah. And then there's uh, this mixture of darker greens and browns and such. What is that dividing line? Yeah, this is a great example of what we're seeing right here is a native coastal prairie and north coastal scrub with coyote brush. And I think it's not grazed by any dairy or beef cows because that's one of the ranch house residences. And so this area is fenced and this is native vegetation for the most part. I see some rushes and even some native coastal bunch grasses going down here. There's some um, coffee berry and other shrubs. But these shrubs, these coyote bushes, are not edible to cows at all. Deer like them, elk like them, but the cows, they just don't eat this stuff. So that green dividing line is the ranchers and the dairy people mowing all of this native grassland to get rid of it so that they can have their pastures. So that green line is a fence line and everything beyond there is just simply designed for cattle forage. And I'm even hearing native birds in here, wren tits, white crowned sparrows. So this is great bird habitat. And when you remove it, they have these big mowing machines. You are reducing it to basically a golf course. And with a golf course, it looks appealing in some sense because you see this nice bright green, but for wildlife, it's completely useless for wildlife. There's no biodiversity there. That's just full of like native or not native introduced European annual grasses, which have very shallow roots. And the only purpose is to feed cattle. There's no bird nesting there. Birds like to nest in these shrubs. There's no cover for brush rabbits. There's no cover for fawns. It's just simply a monoculture of weeds. And that's because the fact that cows won't eat this Right. means that for from an economical point of view, that's wasted land. Cows, yeah. are, cows aren't going to feed on this, so let's replace it with something that the cows will eat. Exactly. It's complete economics. And this is a national park, so economics shouldn't matter. We should have the biodiversity and native plant communities, not uh, an economically profitable monoculture of weeds that's a cattle pasture. And you talked about how you could hear some birds in here and you know there's all kinds of life surrounding us that's hidden because there's actual brush. Now I encountered some urban grazing with goats recently and one day I walked through brush and there were leaves and I saw some birds inside of it. Two days later the goats had gone through, the brush had been stripped bare and I didn't see any birds anymore. Coincidence or can I actually deduce that the stripping of the foliage had something to do with biodiversity leaving the area. Oh, it's completely directly related because birds here need the cover from predators. There are hawks such as red tail hawks, sharp shinned hawks, cooper's hawks, sparrow hawks, which are kestrels, that will come down and pick birds off if there's not enough leaf litter and cover of leaves on shrubs. So when grazing animals um, denude, these shrubs, it robs the birds of cover from predators. So plants have a greater purpose than just looking pretty for our viewing pleasure. Exactly, exactly. And they sequester carbon too. I mean, if we're serious about climate change, we shouldn't be mowing off all these deep rooted bunch grasses and um, shrubs that sequester carbon in the soil. We should be keeping all of this biodiversity. All right, I see the plants changing again behind us. Where are we now? This is one of the rarest, oh, there's a coyote. Coyote in the coyote bush. Yeah. There's more to hunt here. There might be voles, different types of rodents. There's more cover, so the coyotes come here to hunt, probably nesting birds. We spoke because uh, we were looking at plants we kind of spoke about how the plants benefit the herbivores let's talk about how they benefit the carnivores 
Yeah, when you have a richer, healthier native plant ecosystem, you have more insects, you have more birds, you have more rodents, and therefore you have more predators too, native predators. The native coyotes, we've seen bobcats here, badgers. This is actually a remnant coastal prairie, which is actually one of the rare native plant communities in California. I think only one or two percent remain. It was a from Oregon to about Santa Barbara, where the ocean influence was good with the fog. And this is your old growth grassland. These are native perennial bunch grasses with native coyote brush. It's sort of a relic here, a remnant ecosystem that the cows could access, but they just haven't. It's too far from the barn and the troughs and all the, the confined animal feeding operations. And so this has been by benign neglect, the Park Service didn't even know, I pointed this out to them, that this exists. This used to cover all the ridges in Point Reyes National Seashore and into Golden Gate National Recreation Area. But it's so rare now that this is one of the few places I've found it. Please note in the distance the dividing line. You've got the golf course on the right and biodiversity on the left. While we were in the seashore, Laura and I discussed what biodiverse land looks like compared to, say, a golf course. And if you look behind me, I've left the seashore, but this is representative of the rest of Marin County. And although a green hill is visually appealing, especially when you are contained in a city most of the time and you get out from all of that concrete and all that asphalt sure that looks pretty but that is not wildlife habitat that is not biodiversity and if you pay attention you'll notice that that's what you see the majority of your drive <laughs> 